I I don't think that we felt connected to Scarsdale um, proper, if you will. As I said, uh-huh. as I read, we I, I only remember folks going as far as Heathcote. Yeah, now, Heathcote was not you know maybe four or five blocks from where we lived. And uh, at Heathcote, there was uh, a few little small stores, a gas station, um, but there was a pharmacy. And back in those days, you know, you had to go and get your medicines. Mm -hmm. And that might have been the reason for going to Heathcote, because I don't ever remember early days. I don't remember my father taking the car and getting gas there. It looked like he would always go down to down to what they call Rosedale. That's mm-hmm. in White Plains. It was just not not that far from where we live. So we lived on the outskirts. Right. Right. There's, right. I, I know there's, there's gas stations. Yeah, there's gas stations there now, or at least there's one. There's a mobile there. Say it again. There's a, a mobile. There's still a gas station there. I don't know if it, if it was always there, but I if oh, I know yeah, what you're yeah. talking about. The, the on Rosedale. the Mount Avenue. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Rosedale and Merrick Avenue. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. But in any event, um, I, I didn't really remember, quote unquote, a life uh, as I went to grammar school in Scarsdale. In, Qu- in Quaker Ridge? I went to Qu- yeah, Quaker Ridge over there on Griffin Avenue, the building oh. owned by the golf course. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, four room schoolhouse. Uh, that the cousins uh, four or five years older than me all went through that same school. But um, those the, Pitt, the, the Pitt brothers or uh, other say, kids? what brothers? The yes, Pitt? yes, the Pitt, yes, the Pitts, the Pitt brothers mm-hmm. are children from Idella Pitt and her husband, and Idella is a sister to Edward. Okay. And, and, and their, their father was Preston. Okay. And Preston was my grandfather's brother, older brother. Okay. So you were like, but like I said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, uh, except for maybe work employment, Mm-hmm. Uh, to a certain extent, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, people from Saxon Wood Road, black people from Saxon Wood Road, the, the Robert Robert Purdy community went into Scarsdale. You know, I mean, I, uh, my grandmother took in laundry. You know, she ironed and washed laundry, and wow. she and that meant the people brought the laundry to her. You know, huh. and then came and picked it up. You know, and then Would they my come grandmother. In? Hmm. Would they come themselves, or would they maybe send somebody? No, they would come. Okay. From my understanding, they, they would come. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know they they had no reason to fear anything. <laughs> you know. Right. No. 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 I was. I was. I was wondering if they had servants or something like that that they would send. Uh, but I guess if they had servants, they, they'd probably do it themselves. Sure, yeah. No, I'm sure they had um, chauffeurs. And domestic workers that cared for the, took care of the house and right. took care of the children, but but they would come and bring uh, the the shirts and the laundry, and then come and ah. pick it up. And then because I don't think in those days, like it did happen as time went on, the domestic maid was permitted to drive the family car ah. way back then. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so therefore they had to do it. And then also, uh, we, we had a cow before I was born, and to my <laughs> understanding, my, my grandmother sold milk. Ah. Uh, wow. And how did so when she did laundry? I, I, I'm trying to imagine the era. Literally, like, how did it? Did she have an electric machine? Was she bending over a basin? What was she doing? In the basement, there were two two um, tubs, okay. um, and she used scrub boards. You know what a scrub wow. board is? I, th- I think I do, if I'm thinking of the one that sometimes uses a musical instrument. 
Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's yeah, the only way I so, know it. <laughs> yeah, so she had two porcelain uh, tubs in the basement, uh-huh. and they and, and they had they would lay a um, washboard in there and then scrub the you know scrub the clothes on that. She must have gotten strong. <laughs> well, she was probably. <laughs> you know, taking that in and doing that for a living, but I mean, it's, it's somebody who's not afraid of hard well, work. Yeah, it wasn't. Well, I guess you could say we're doing for a living. We're doing to help the income. I guess right. you, you know, you know. And um, I mean, she wasn't a real strong lady, but she got mostly that hand work, your hands, you know. But anyway, right? Yeah, that 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 occurred, you know. And then of course. Uh, ironing you know mm-hmm. with the you know with the um with those uh cast iron irons that you put on the stove oh man <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> because and so electric, no, keep on electricity electricity costs money you know and so you didn't you kind of conserved on that you know uh-huh huh <laughs> Um, and so you, it was, I think it was the, did you have five houses there then the little group? There, there were, there were seven houses, seven. Okay. two, two bungalows. Mm-hmm. My uncle built a bungalow, I think in 1938 or 37 uh-huh. on, on the prop on the, his, his grandfather's property. And then up the street, um, there was a bungalow that the Johnsons, um, the the uh, Johnson family, uh, lived in. Mm-hmm. And the other houses were all two story. Okay. I th- I think there's there's a couple of them left. One looks one looks kind of original the other one is like barely recognizable i don't know there might be there might be more than that behind hedges but uh okay that right, area right, changed. right now right now if you're coming up the street from rosedale <laughs> coming from white uh-huh. Plains, mm-hmm. the first house on the left is the bungalow that my uncle built oh okay his daughter lives there is that is that carol ann that's Carol Ann. Oh, okay. Right. Retired lab te- technician. Okay. And then the next the next house is our grandparents' home. Wow. And that house was sold in the 60s, and mm-hmm. the family enlarged it. Okay. So, you know, I can look and see my grandfather's house, but somebody mm-hmm. else looked, and they wouldn't ever imagine what right. it looked like, you know. <laughs> and then the uh, next house was Idella's house with her four sons, the Pit Boys. Mm-hmm. And that house was purchased and really enlarged. Hmm. And that house had a had a well in the front of it, front yard, and uh-huh. our house had a well in the front of it. But then the next house is Edward's house, Aunt Dell's brother's house. And that house is still the way it was. Okay. And then the next house was Esther's house. And I don't know if you have you seen that picture of the old house? Uh it's 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 big, right? Yeah, big house sitting and it looked like the front lot yard, the grass is growing up. Okay. It's an old, sure. shabby looking, old wood frame, shabby looking house. Okay. And that picture I took in the 60s. Ah. But I don't know how to get it to people now, but it's, it's, it, it's around, you know. As a matter of fact, uh, in Phyllis Murray's Articles. She has put a pop copy of that, a p- picture of that. 
Okay. But anyway, the next house from Aunt Esther's house was this next bungalow. That was the Johnson's house, Susie Johnson and her husband's house. And Susie Johnson, uh, a sister uh, from the South, but she married uh, the brother of of Esther Johnson, Esther, Esther's husband. There were two brothers married those two girls. Okay. But in any event, that that house is the small house which they, when they tore it down, they called it the doll house. When they had a con, it was a big controversy as to whether the house should be sold or whatever and so forth. They called it the right. doll house. Right. And the then Norwegian the next, woman. Uh huh. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. She was upset because she didn't want someone building a great big house next to her, <laughs> and I could understand it, but. Fortunately, unfortunately, things didn't go the way I felt it should. But, you know, developers have money, and that's what's happening in yep. America. <laughs> yep. But in yep, any of sure. the next house, the next house was Uncle Howard's house. And, you know, I say uncle and aunt, but they're not really uncle and aunt. But <laughs> in the small mm-hmm. community, they are uncles and aunts. You know, they're not, you know, traditionally the the American uh, Webster Dictionary Meaning, you know, we, we, they weren't right. we weren't really related, but we called him Uncle Howard and his uh, wife. And I forget her name. They lived there. He worked, I think he worked at Scardale Supply uh, uh, Lumberyard. And then what, the what next was last, house. Hmm? What was Howard's last name? What was Howard's last name? Johnson, Johnson, Howard Johnson. Howard. Oh, but I don't oh think okay, he, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think he was related to the other Johnsons. Okay. Uh, you know, it's not not clear, you know. Right. But in any event, the next house, um, I don't know who originally lived in that house. I, I, I'm led to believe that different families lived in that house, that this okay. white man had built this house. And as right. time went on, a family named Parnell I, I spoke with, yes, I spoke with George Parnell last week. Oh, that's the son. The son, yes, yes, he was class Ooh, late, late, class of maybe class of maybe seventy eight, and if you want, I after after I can send you the link. I, I we had a video call and I have it on YouTube, so you can see our conversation. It's about an hour. Please do with his phone number. Yes, please. Okay. Oh, I, I, I never, yeah, I never knew him because okay. you know our age is so different, and I had moved away from uh, in the sixties. I had moved, you see, but I, uh-huh. I knew of him, and I've been by and said hello. And he was a kid running around. I say talk to his mother and his and his sis, older sister, you know. But I didn't really know him, but he knew my cousin George. Okay. Who is Carol Ann's brother? Okay, and I'll tell you that story a little later. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but but the Parnells came and purchased that house, and then they, wow, they, <laughs> you would have thought they were cousins, you know, because it was so, such a a good relationship, you know, and I don't wow. really know, I really don't know where. The Parnells came from. I don't know what what state where where they came from. You know, was, I'm was, not, I guess wasn't I'm not clear. You know, but I knew them very well. You know. Yeah, it was either North or South Carolina. I think North. Very, very uh, possible. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he'll he'll say he'll say and, in yeah. the video. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And then that was the, that was the last house. See. And, right. And um, and then I'll just digress and say that. Right now, if you go up the street and you pass all those houses I spoke of, well, the ones that are there, and then you get past Parnell's house, then there'll be a next house up on the left, on the same side. There'll be another house up there. Uh And that house was built by some people, some white people. (laughs) (laughs) However, back in the 40s, 40s, I'll say, maybe 40s, 
um, Edward's daughter and her husband, who was uh, working at Scarsdale um, as the um, for the public works department. Okay. A ret- I mean, he was retired, served in the military. And he went to City Hall to ask about buy, building a house there, where that house is now. And they mm-hmm. told him because the brook ran through there, a house could not be built there. Okay. And I never, you know, I'll never forget that, you know, and, and voila, now yeah. <laughs> there's a yeah, house really. there, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that, uh. that, that. That was the that was the seven row houses, and then in the back of three o five, Edwards and Charlotte, Edward uh, and mm-hmm. Charlotte um, uh, and their family, there was a house, and I'm not clear. Um, when I was thirteen. Uh, I don't ever remember anybody living in a house. It was just an old house there, two-story house. And we used to play in the house. You know, pigeons would be in the house, squirrels. And <laughs> we used to play, you know, me and uh, Edward's two younger g- daughters, you know, we'd play around and fool around in the house. And then they tore the house down. Uh, but there had been some families living there, and I don't know just who originally lived there. Uh, I really don't know. And okay. I do have a cousin, Margaret. <laughs> She'll get upset with me. <laughs> that lives in Atlanta, who's uh, the, the the twin sister of George Peterson. And okay. she might know. I, I I will ask her. She I don't. Okay. She doesn't really want to be. Uh, to a certain extent, like Carol, they don't really want to be on phone you know (laughs) some people do you know but anyway but anyway that's those are the houses you know and uh as we as i grew up also there was conversation as to whether ever there would be houses built across the street from our houses right and people say well may i don't know i don't know and so then voila uh, they built houses across the street, but they built them in from the other way, whereas their back doors were facing our front. Ah. <laughs> huh. So there's, huh. there's houses there, but their backs are facing our front. There's no houses across the street from us. That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. very interesting. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> So what was that, you know, growing up with all of these, you know, distant relatives, what was it like? Was it just, you know, playing and just going each other's back doors and calling up and seeing who's there and going into the, what was it, the Fale Estate or the park or whatever was there at that time? You know, was it, was it, was it nice to be with all those people? Do you realize the question that you asked? <laughs> Was well, it nice I, I, to be with your relatives? That, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, some some people don't get along with their relatives, so I don't I don't mean to assume or whatever. No, I but, I understand that, that that I understand. It was a yeah. wonderful time. Oh, uh, that's right. I ne- I I never heard any misunderstandings of any mm. of the families, Johnsons, mm. Upshaws, um. Peterson's pits, never, never, never. We no. Wow. A harmonious family, people um, interacting with each other. You know, uh, uh, two ladies, Miss Pitt and Miss Idella Pitt and um, Charlotte Peterson, every Saturday made hot rolls and <laughs> uh, you know. Uh. <laughs> wow. No. Yep. Yeah, it was very, very harmonious, and I've never, ever witnessed a policeman or a fire truck coming down there to do anything because 
There never was a fire, and there was never any call for police, to my understanding. Right, right. Huh. I mean, in my years, in my years growing up there, and um, yeah. Wow, oh, that's really it sounds really idyllic. You know, you kind of have your own little uh, enclave. Uh, you know, well, it's rare. Well, you see, today there's a lot of talk about integration. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. About seg- segregation. Yeah, what's that word? Segregation. <laughs> Correct. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, we we were all black people. <laughs> right. There was no white people to live there. No, and there wasn't no integration then. So there was no intermarriage <laughs> like it mm-hmm. is today all over the place. And yeah. whether that was good or better than now, I can't say. You know, um, there's so much, there's so much been thrown in in the soup now. You know, but mm-hmm. I'm saying we we, we had um, very good times, very very harmonious time, helping each other. They helped me with my school work, you know, and mm. and uh, the farmers, the the families helped each other with what what they were doing and so forth. The, every year, uh, they had. You know, they would kill pigs. We raised pigs and chickens. Uh huh. And so there comes a time when the pigs got to going to kill a pig. Uh huh. So uh, when I was in last year of high school, my father's pig got so big, <laughs> uh, he, he said, "Well, I got to I got to kill this pig. This pig has gotten too big." And so he was trying to figure out how is he going to going to kill it. And they say, well, you got to slice the, the throat. Oh, so man, now you got to get in, you, you got to get in the pen with the big pig and try to slice the throat. And the pig knows what's happening, so he ain't gonna <laughs> let that happen. And 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 it didn't happen. And it didn't oh. happen. Oh, they tried, they tried, and tried. And one of Miss Pitt's sons said, okay, I'll go and get my twenty-two. Uh. And he went and got his twenty two rifle and shot the pig in the head. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I never forget that. Oh, you know? oh my <laughs> God. Wow. Yeah. But were there, um, were there any no go ahead. No, go no, I wasn't gonna say anything. Yeah, no, uh were there were there any like holidays or anything like that that you all spent together? I don't remember any holidays that we set together, but I remember that we used to have what they call picnics, but we don't use that word anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. In the backyard, in the back of uh, Miss Pitt's yard and Edward's yard, that's sister and brother. In the back of their yard, it was a great big area, and they used to have a. Uh, they had picnic benches, you know, and they would invite mm. people down from White Plains. Because, nice. uh, you know, we we knew people, you know, they knew people in White Plains, and they would invite them, and the people in White Plains would say, oh, we're going down to the country. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and there would be a nice big, you know, potato salad and fried chicken and so forth. Mm. But But actually, holidays, you know, like Easter, Christmas, uh, Columbus Day, uh, they were not really celebrated. We knew about them and maybe listened to the radio or maybe uh-huh. went to White Plains to a parade, but but not really, no. Okay. And, and how about church? Did you all go to the same church? No. Okay, now that's an interesting scenario. Robert yeah. Purdy and his wife, Lena, started a church on Saxonwood Road. I still don't know where his house was, hmm. but he started a house there. I mean, church there, and then the the, the group moved into Mamaroneck. I think it was Cedar Street or Cedar Road. Okay, a house there that the the family was the the people were meeting in, in this house. And it then became Barry Avenue AME Zion, which is there on Barry Avenue now. Right. And the Petersons 
uh, Edward and Charlotte's family, 305, all went to Barry Avenue Church. Mm -hmm. Uh, My grandmother, it is said, was involved when the church was on Saxonwood Road. Hmm. But I don't remember Grandma going down to Barry Avenue Church. Of course, when I got there, you know, it was uh, Grandma was a grown lady. I, I just don't remember her going there. Uh, matter okay. of fact, I don't remember her going to church. You know, right? But right, but okay. um, but um, Carol's father went to Barry Avenue Church. Okay. Um, hmm. Matter of fact, he sang in the choir. Um, hmm. Now, my father had a sister, Clementine, who lived in White Plains, Clementine Jackson. And okay. so on Sundays, he would take me to her house in White Plains on Brookfield Street because she had a son my age to to let me be around a boy because... Jacksonwood Road wasn't no boys but me. Oh, Everybody else okay. was girls. <laughs> so I would go up there. He would take me up there on Sunday, and I would stay and go Sunday school and then go to church. And so Bethel Baptist Church was where I came, was in. Okay. Now, right. however, however, before that, when I was, oh, maybe, I guess, five or six years old, I went to a Sunday school, a Presbyterian Sunday school that is on, was on Mamaronic Avenue, right at the end of Saxonwood Road, right across. If you come down Saxonwood Road, go on to Mamaronic Avenue, going toward Mamaronic. When you get Mm -hmm. to the end of Saxonwood Road, if you look right across the street, there's a stone building that's, I think, an insurance building now. That used to be a Presbyterian church. Oh. And I used to be brought there, I think, uh, kind of because I think the man that my father was a chauffeur for owned that property or some kind of connection there, something or other. But I know I remember being brought there and dropped off, you know. And then my cousin from Mamaronek, James, um, can't think of his last name, James Allen, they called him mm-hmm. Hip, H-I-P-P, who was a very much a motorcycle rider. He mm. used to come by and pick me up from the Sunday school and bring me home on the motorcycle. Ah, the boy's dream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I guess I was about seven years old or something like that. But, right. but after that, my father took me to White Plains, and that's where I, you know, Bethel Baptist. Now, the the um, Esther Johnson, uh, Esther Johnson, let me think now. Esther Johnson, Esther, Esther Peterson, who is a sister to Edward and Idell, uh, mm-hmm. whose father was Preston Peterson and mother was Phoebe Purdy. Hmm. Phoebe Purdy is daughter to Robert and Lena who originally were the original people. However, Esther's people all went to church in Yonkers. Uh I don't know how that happened, but yeah, they were the Upshaws they they married into one of the Johnsons married into the Upshaws, Bertha, I think. And okay. they all went to church in Mamaronic. Hmm. I mean in Yonkers. Right. Right. In right. Yonkers, yeah. Yeah. That's a high and um, for... so it was, you know, it was like um everybody else was going where they were going, you know, it was understood, right. you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. You mm-hmm. spent you spent your Sunday Sundays apart but the rest of the time together. <laughs> or something right. together. So yeah. I'm I'm looking I'm looking right now at a really nice picture that I think comes from you. Five women in dresses. 
and I think one it might it might be one looks like your mother and her sister, and then there's three others that look like they could be sisters or cousins. Do you know the picture I'm talking about? And it, they're like kneeled down in front of a house. Exactly right. Yes. The lady on the right, I believe that's my mother okay. in the back. And the lady in the back on the left is um, is uh, Charlie Fitch's uh, mother. Um, Charlie Fitch was a young man who lived with his mother in White Plains. Mm-hmm. And I believe those were all domestic workers. They look like two Asian girls in the front, right? It, it only, yes. Yes. One of them, one of them sort of does, but I think it's like her hair was straightened and I mean, I don't know. I can't tell, but, but uh, yeah, but I believe, one of them, mm-hmm. I believe that they were all, they were all domestic workers because my mother was a domestic worker. Right. And I don't know where uh, Mrs. Fitch worked. But I thought that that they were someone, they were people, they were sisters, women who were invited to my grandmother and grandfather's house for maybe like a, a Sunday or something on their day off or something. Yeah. You know, I I was thinking about that, how, you know, because at that time you had, you know, a fair number of black domestic workers in Scarsdale, but a lot of them, their homes might have been a little bit farther but you guys had a place or, you know, there was a place for people to congregate on their day off and socialize. So I think yes. it seems like it was, it was a little bit less lonely for, for someone who had a home right nearby like that. Yes. Uh, it seems like a very nice thing. And did your mother have a sister as well nearby? No. Well, yes, yes, yes. My mother was the youngest. She's from Shannon, Mississippi. Huh. And she's the youngest of the family. There must have been maybe about seven of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, her her oldest sister, Sylvia, who lived in White Plains, um, I don't know just how, well, I'll tell you, he, she lived with her husband, Harrison Griffin, in White Plains on Fulton Street, in the Zito's rooming house. Zito hmm, okay. was a famous Italian Italian family that lived over there near near the county center, Fulton Street and Russell Street. Okay. Big big family over there, the Zitos. And my aunt Sylvia lived in that house. Her husband worked for the city. He was uh okay. you know, uh work um digging digging ditches and stuff for the city. In any event, okay. she lived there, and then her children went to um, went to Mimarnic, I mean um, Battle Hill. Okay. And they went with Rosa, who was the daughter to Zito. But in other okay. words, from there they went. They went to school. Now, my sister, I mean my aunt. Sylvia invited my mother and her brother, my mother Josephine Baker and her brother Caleb Baker to come to White Plains. And so my mother came and she became a domestic worker. Caleb didn't stay long. He, I don't know, didn't find it useful or something or other. (laughs) <laughs> he, he didn't. He didn't stay. He didn't stay. I have stories about that, but that, that's another t- another another part of the book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, in, in any of that, yeah, she. Um, my mother came, and then she was did domestic work. Uh, I have a, a a document showing where she worked on. I think fifty, uh, number fifty uh, North Broadway. Uh, mm. You know, a receipt for be, being getting paid. But in any event, yes, she came and lived there. And as a side note, I still don't know about my mother and the famous singer, 
black woman in Paris, right. Josephine yes, yes. Baker, who uh-huh. was from Mississippi. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that 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 the, 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 somewhere there's a connection there. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd have to find out what town or uh, something right, like that. Right, right, right. Yeah. So in any event, um, yes, they came, and that's how. Well, that's how it was happening. I mean, not only with black people, but with white, everybody else. You know, you you invite your siblings to come and from from where you, wherever they are, and voila, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. There's a, I think I think there's another photo I'm looking at. I think it's your father and mother standing in front of the building. Your father is wearing I think it's your father. He's wearing a hat and it looks like a striped suit. It must have been a church day or something like that. This photo must have come from you. They're uh, standing in they're, they're standing in front of the barn, I think. My grandfather's barn. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's a yes, barn. It's yes. not finished like a house. Um yeah. I, you know, I'm not uh, do, do you, by the way, I don't know if, if which fo- I can't keep track of all which photos, but the ones that you, I think I was able to grab the ones that you had scanned for some project at White Plains Library. Do you mind if I show them during my presentation? It's not going to be a major I don't feature, mind but... at all. Great. I okay. don't mind at all. Yeah, I mean, because I think they're 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 beautiful pictures of that era, and we don't have a ton of pictures from then to show kind of like daily life. So thank you. So I also, there's a couple other people. I, I, I'm not, I'll try to keep it straight in my head, but to see how they're related to you. So William or Cack Peterson, was he, uh, do you William, know how he was related? Yeah, William uh, yeah. Peterson. They call uh-huh. him Cack. Right. He was Edward and Charlotte's son. Okay, so that would make him like a cousin. And, I guess they're all cousins. <laughs> yeah, he's a cousin, and he yeah. he he went in the navy. Yes, there's a really nice picture of him, his navy photo. Right, 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 and I believe he, among uh, Bruce, Leon, and Theodore, are names are on the monument in Scarsdale in the square as uh, as veterans of Scarsdale. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, and then I think Dorothy Peterson Hack, ha- Hackey or Hackney, I think. It's... Dorothy Hackley is Cat, uh, William's sister. Okay. And she married uh, Mr. Hackley, and they lived in Mamaroneck. Okay. And and the twins, Maud and Mildred. M- Maud and Millie. Millie, yeah. Maud and They're... Millie... Maud and Millie were were sisters of Edward and Idella and Esther. Okay. And they were twins, right. and they lived in Mamaroneck. One drove a car, and uh, one didn't drive. And they always had an old, uh, well, it was old time, you know, Model A or something or other. And they were very much known as the Mamaroneck twins. <laughs> More than really. So as you you know, so you you came up, I guess, uh, Quaker Ridge, then went through eighth grade, and then you go to the high school. Was that a big change for you? Quite a big change. Number one, a whole lot of more students, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and and uh, of course, uh, the fact that they were all white uh, wasn't mm-hmm. uh, a change for me because. Mm-hmm. In the grammar school, I was the only black male also. So, but it was just that it was more students, you know, Fox Meadow, Edgemont, Edgewood, all yeah. these students coming, you know, and wow, wow, wow. But, <laughs> you know, I had a good, I had, a, if you will, a good relationships there. Um, they they invited me and I became a member of the, of the um, fraternity. Huh. Yeah. And um, uh, what else? And then um, <laughs> I tell you a little side joke. So we uh-huh. used to go out. You know, the guys would go out to the taverns 
uh, the fraternity guys, you know, and so we go to a place called Michael's on Central Avenue. Okay. And one of the, one of the fraternity brothers' name was Michael, an Irish boy. Michael, mm-hmm. I forget his last name. So we go in there, and everybody's ordering beer, and the, the bartender says, okay, I got to see your IDs, got to see your IDs. And so Michael mm-hmm. passed me pass me his draft card. <laughs> and, and I showed it to the guy and the guy looked at it and said, okay, okay, okay. Well, you know, he he wanted to make sales, right. you know. Yeah, exactly. But, that, it. <laughs> but, um, but it, you know, I had good, I had good times. I don't remember any real bad times in Scarsdale High School. At, uh, no, in Scarsdale High School, um, high school, high school, high school. I don't remember any not good, so good times in Scarsdale High School. Okay. But I do remember one reunion I went to. I don't know which one it was, but just before the banquet, uh, one of the students guys came to me and he said, Alfred. Uh, how you doing? I said, I'm pretty good. He says, I want to apologize to you for some inappropriate uh, actions I did when I when we were in school. I said, oh, well, all right. Well, thank you for that apology. It looks like the banquet's getting ready to start. <laughs> and I just, uh, I don't remember who it was. And uh, I just let it go. You know, I mean, he was able to release himself from that. But I don't right. remember any problems in high school. But going back to grammar school, <laughs> yeah, uh oh, there was yeah. a. Uh, you're so young, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> you perhaps won't remember this because you're so young. Do you remember mm. Archie Andrews? No. It was a funny book. A funny, funny book. Archie Andrews. Okay. And then there was a radio program, Archie Andrews. You don't remember that, though, right? No, no, it's a little before yeah, my okay, time. See. Yeah, you're so young. I'll look it up. And, I'll look it up. And then, and then there was oh, a comic Oh, uh, like Archie. Yeah, Archie. I know Archie. Archie I, I'm sure. Yeah, I know yeah, that it's Archie. Archie. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said it wrong. Archie, okay. And yeah, then the around that yeah. time, around that time, there was another comic strip. Little eight ball. Uh, it was a picture of a black uh, uh, figure, right. amongst others, and the story about it. Cartoon. Hmm. In grammar school, I was called eight ball. Uh. When. We had recess, and they wanted to play kickball. Someone would say, okay, I'll take Mary, Sally, John, and eight. Right. Huh. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know that it bothered me, if you will, possibly because w- w- what was I going to do about it? I mean, right. but the the recreation person was there, and they heard everything, and it was so, you know, to, right. I'm, a, I'm a young kid, you know, I'm a young kid. Okay, ha 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 ha, you know. Right. However, however, the thing that did bother me, Michael Ward, high school, I mean, grammar school student, with mm-hmm. me, brother served in the military. Okay. And when he and when he came home, he taught Michael jujitsu. That's what what was happening. I guess this was in the Vietnam War, maybe or something or other. But anyway, every recess, Michael Ward would practice on me, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and I would end up crying and throwing rocks at him and mad and. The teacher would say, oh, oh, oh it's all right. Don't, don't, don't. But at the next recess, same thing would happen, you know. Uh, but, but um, you know, I don't think it was a racist thing. It was just that Michael was trying to um, 
show the girls uh, how he could do this judicial thing. Right. And uh, I, I guess I look close to the to the to the Japanese. <laughs> uh, something. Were you big? Were you yeah. were you small back then? <laughs> hmm. Were you, were you small for your age? Um. No, I don't think so. Not really. Yeah, no. It's just. It's just. Yeah. But uh, but but, but aside from that, you know, Michael uh, Michael War, Michael Winfrey Ship Winship, uh, Hugh Vandenzi, um, um, oh Tony Tony, uh, you know, I had a bunch of grammar school buddies guys that we had a lot of fun together. You know, it was just that this Michael guy was doing this thing. You know. Yeah, <laughs> and and would. E- would you go to the, ever go to their houses, or would they ever go to your house? Never went to my house to any of them, and I never yeah. went to any any of their houses, uh, grammar school, high school, except uh-huh. Radley Harold. Radley wow. Harold lived on Old Mermanic Road. His father had been a doctor, but his father died early, and like my mother died early, and so we were kind of like, and he was the closest to me, but he lived at the end of Saxonwood Road, uh, okay. at Old Mimanic Road, and and uh, the family had kennels of dogs, and Radley hmm. would be would would go down to Madison Square Garden when they had the dog shows and. He did all that, you know, as as a boy, a young boy with the dogs and so forth. But, but he, um, and then his mother was the Cub Scout le- uh, leader, and mm. so I was in the Cub Scouts. His mother was the leader, and Radley was one. And so I used to be around his house, and around the kennels and so forth. Uh, and we used to play, um, play around, you know. Cowboys mm-hmm. and so forth. Yes, Radley, and Radley. And um, go ahead. And, and and so, do you think that it was was his mother different than the other parents, or was it just that he lived closer, or that you had a reason to go there? Why were you, you know, able think, to kind of go ahead? Uh, it, it was his mother and his aunt, and I okay. think that uh, somehow they might have felt that. Well, here's a little boy whose mother died when he was seven, and and he's uh, our 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 son's age, or you know, and and so uh, let's you know, and that's da da da, you know. I I think I think it was kind of like that. Um, it, but in, and in race the, race wasn't enough. Uh, Ra- race wasn't enough to stand in the way for them. They just saw no, saw you as a boy, not, him no. as a boy, and that's that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, uh, uh, but now the other families, uh, I just never visited. I never was invited. Uh, you know, after school was over, there was a bus that took took us home, and so if I if I wasn't getting on the bus, then I how could I get home? You know, my father was working, and nobody, you know, so it yeah. was it was something like that. I mean. Uh, I guess the parents could have dro- driven me home, but that never really did happen. I, I, you know, like I said, in grammar school, I had good friends of girls and guys who were friends. Uh-huh. I have a young lady that today lives in, and uh, <laughs> Betty Merrill lives in um, Largemont, and her brother okay. was a good friend of mine, and she was a very good friend of our cousins, and I've talked to her. As a matter of fact, uh, Betty and I were uh, did a story about Quaker Ridge that was in the uh, Scarsdale Enquirer a while ago. Mm. Front page, front page. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't know that I have a copy of that. I don't know, but yeah, Scarsdale Enquirer. Uh, uh, Betty yeah. and I, Betty Merrill and Al Peterson about because um, we, we were. In the first class, the first graduating class of Quaker Ridge on Weaver Street. Oh, okay. When it moved from Griffin Avenue to Weaver Street, we were in that first graduating class. And I don't know if you have the picture 
of the graduating class at Quaker Ridge Weaver Street. And I'm in the picture. I'm in the picture. And it was in the Scardale Inquiry, but my name is omitted from the Uh, (laughs) the students. uh, (laughs) uh, (laughs) um, In in high school, um, did you go to your prom? Yes. I went to the prom. I took a young lady that I had been dating from Ellensford, a black lady, a black girl from Ellensford, and she uh, worked at, uh, she worked in the five and 10 cent store, I think in White Plains, with one of my high school white girl girl uh, students. But okay. yeah, but I went to the prom and I took her. Yeah. Right. Hmm. And then after after high school, what what did you do? After high, you mean after I graduated? Correct. After I graduated, I um, gave up my paper route. I had a I, I delivered the reporter dispatch the last three or four huh. years of of school. And I gave up the paper route. Um, actually, <laughs> they told me that I needed to uh, relieve myself of the paper route so that a younger uh, <laughs> kid could get the paper, get the help him, that person. So the uh, Golf and Wound Supply place on Mimaronic Avenue right in Rosedale, which was my one of my customers, they hired me, and I went and worked in the office uh, putting peas and and in the in the boxes and all like that in the office okay and b- before before we did that how did you deliver the paper on a bicycle on foot bicycle in bicycle. the okay. summertime and a sled in the winter time really huh <laughs> i don't feel like we, yeah. i don't feel like <laughs> and uh and so this was all you did this all before high school. I mean, you know, whatever five six in the during, morning during high school. Yeah, during high school. That was one one of the reasons I guess or why I didn't. And do it. Yeah, I didn't or, do after school sports or go and do anything after school because I had to get home and do my paper route. Oh, uh, so afternoon. Okay. Huh. And I think uh, I'm, I'm no, I'm jumping around a little bit. You were also in like the band and the chorus, weren't you? In school? Yeah. No, I wasn't in a band. No, was I in okay. a band? No, I don't think I was in a band. Not in school. No, no. I did play uh, in the uh, Elks uh, drum corps out of White Plains. Um, but no, I was no, no, I don't no. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm looking. I'm, yeah, I was looking back at some old photos. I thought I saw you maybe with a clarinet or something. Okay, um, I did might. play the cl- I did play the clarinet, but I don't remember. I yeah, don't remember knows. being. I don't remember being <laughs> in a group, but I did practice and play the clarinet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. And did you did you feel like Scarsdale really prepared you for for work? You thought it was a good education. Well, <laughs> I would say Scarsdale gave me a very good education, mm-hmm. but I didn't absorb it. Uh, uh, I I I, um, I went to school like someone goes to Disney World. You know, it was like mm-hmm. going somewhere just to spend time, and it wasn't exciting to me. Yeah. Uh, and, but but there was some things that were exciting, you know. Maybe algebra was exciting, but English wasn't exciting. History, um, yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like sports, but uh, but it, you know, I I and I didn't in my mind think about it as preparing for work or preparing for life. It was just you're spending your time here, and you got to do this. Right, right. And and uh, I tell people that, you know, uh, my English teacher, Mrs. Yorman, she tried very hard, <laughs> uh, 
mm-hmm. but um, uh, I can remember her saying, Alfred, spell it like it sounds. Mm-hmm. And I would spell it wrong again. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the consonants, consonants and vowels, what did I, I what are that? What's that? I, I, you know, I didn't pay attention to what that was. Yeah. You see, so uh, it was, it was even, even almost after high school that I still didn't know the difference between T H E R E and T H E I R. Right, right. I would put, yeah. I would put them in the wrong places, and it was to, for me, it was well, you know what I'm talking about. What's the yeah. difference, you know? Right, right, <laughs> right. You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. However, however, uh, there came a time when my father said, "Well, what, what, what do you, what do you want to do? You know, what? You know, he had been a chauffeur. He had been a mecha- uh, 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 trying to be a mechanic. He was attending a gas station uh, attendant. Um, uh, he he did landscape lawns and things like that. And I just wasn't feeling any of that. I mean, I used to cut the grass at the house, but." Uh, and so he said, well, why don't you take the post office test? He had then been accepted or uh, invited to be uh, in the post office in the Bronx, and that's where he was working. Okay. And so he said, well, why don't you take the post office test? I had another cousin, um, one of Miss Pitt's sons, who worked in the White Plains post office. And so I passed the test, and I started working in the post office. Hmm. And uh, yeah. it was like I'm the, almost like the youngest guy there. There were other blacks, you know, working there mm-hmm. also. And it was White Plains, and it was, you know, you really need to know White Plains, know the streets and so forth, and I didn't know the streets. Uh-huh. And that was a little bit of a problem with me. Um, and then there came a time when they put a, a position on the bulletin board to be a clerk at the garage at the post office garage. And I said, okay, I'll take that. Hmm. Okay. And, um, I, I took it because, and I beat, I, I got it. Nobody else wanted all the guys, <laughs> all the guys <laughs> who had much seniority over me, they didn't want to leave and go down to the garage and work. Hmm. And so I took it, I put my bid in and I got it. And I went down there and that's where I worked, ended up, as an administrative assistant and that's where I retired from. Hmm. And and I will say that <laughs> another time I will tell you about the racist situations that occurred there. Very, uh, very bad. Three uh, times three times the supervisor brought me to the postmaster to expel me from the post office for for wrongdoings. And three times the postmaster said, Alfred, you go back to your work. You, you're all right. Go back to your work. I said, yes, but this guy keeps, keeps on my he's on my back, you know? Right, right. But in any event, in any event, another time. But uh, yeah. what's your next, another, next question? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Did you keep up with any of your high school friends? Um, no. Yeah. High school friends, no. I really yeah. didn't keep up with any of my high school friends. Um, no, I would say no. Uh, uh, maybe I would try to catch up with some of the grammar school guys, but right. not the high school, not the high school. But let me tell you what happened. Yeah. I uh, working at the post office uh, in 1971. Mm-hmm. I started there. In, I started there in 1952. Mm-hmm. In 1971, I was visiting a young lady in White Plains in the projects, and um, a, mis- a misunderstanding occurred, okay. and I was shot. Oh, goodness! And mm. uh, I got myself to the hospital. Huh. And um, voila, I'm still here. Okay, right. right. It, 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 I have the largest 
I have the longest period of being in the intensive care in White Plains Hospital. Wow. I had to have the lower part of my heart repaired. Huh. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's an interesting story. I mean, there's a whole lot more yeah. to it. But, I but mean, then I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. But then I'll tell you that while I was in intensive care, there was a radio. And the mm-hmm. nurses said, you want to hear the radio? I said, okay. And they turned it on for me, and I listened to it and listened to it. When I got out of intensive care, I, I was looking at the radio, and they say, yeah, a guy came here. He had, he was a insurance man, and he had a car accident, and he was here in intensive care almost not as long as you, but he was here, and he left this radio. It hmm. was one of my Quaker Ridge Student uh. friends, <laughs> Alan Dale, uh. <laughs> and nice I talked guess. to him. You know, I talked to him since. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, he's much better than everything now. But that was a very interesting occurrence. <laughs> For sure. So, did she shoot you, or someone else shot you? Uh, someone else. Wow. Uh, Oof. That's pretty scary. It was, a, it, was a, it was a domestic, it was a, what they call domestic violence, domestic misunderstanding. Uh, it, it's another story I'll tell you at another time, but, you know. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, uh, it was just um, the, the part I tell you, I tell, I tell people is just so happened that a Jewish uh, doctor, uh, Dr. Jacobs, 27 years old, I think. Wow. Was, uh, was there on duty that Sunday. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember him saying to me, make an X, Al, make an X. You know, you have to sign to be operated on. <laughs> 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 so I was like, I couldn't see nothing, you know. I was trying to write my name very correctly, you know. <laughs> and I yeah. can remember him saying, just make an X, Al, make an X. And then when <laughs> I woke up, when I came out of intensive, when I came out of whatever, he said, Al, uh, they're making a big deal of this, but you're going to be all right. Mm-hmm. There was five or six, five or six doctors around all the time, and da da da. I have a, a copy of uh, uh, the, the the White Plains High, High Hospital magazine that they put out, and I was a big part of them uh, trying to get funds, showing them the, how they saved this person, you know. Ah. Oh. So the story goes on, and then years go, years later, I said, you know, I want to go back and tell Dr. Jacob Whips thank you very much. Nice. Because I'm still around. Uh-huh. He passed away of pancreatic cancer. Uh... It, it, really, it really knocked me for a loop. It really knocked mm. me. But his son is a doctor, and I was able to talk to his son. Wow. I bet he was very grateful so, to hear know, it. Uh, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So any more of those pictures you have that you want to ask about? Uh, I'm just looking through. You know, Did you ever uh, get a copy of the picture of the students sitting on the porch at Quaker Ridge Griffin Avenue School? I don't think so. I have a I, I have a picture. I do have a picture of some, a very blurry picture. It's there's there's a six standing adults, and then there's a bunch of kids sitting down, and there's a lot of black kids in the picture. So I don't, That's but I don't know. That's the picture know. I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, it's really the the copy I have was really small and blurry. Okay. Oh wow! And, well. Somehow, I'm uh, sure I could see you get a copy of that picture. I don't know how, but that's the picture. Um, that's the only picture that surfaced. Uh, some some student down in Florida sent that. I forget. That's been a while, quite a while. And, 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 um, and so there's, there's one, there's one, two, three, four. It looks like there's almost like five black. Maybe, no, no. It looks like it's four black boys and two black girls in it, and then you know two dozen white kids. And there's two. Yeah. There's three. There's three black adults 
standing there, two women and one man. In the back, and, yeah. Those, yeah. Those were all my cousins, and they all lived on Saxonwood Road. All those black children, all of them lived on Saxonwood Road. And, and this photo it, was around what year? Do you know? I, I, I really can't say. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like, I, I really, let me see. Wow. No, I... I, but, I before your time or I, after your time there? Oh, much oh, much before my time. Okay. Oh, All much right. before my time, yeah. And the okay. white man, the white man is standing up in the back. That's the uh, custodian. Huh. Huh. And, and uh, I think there's a white lady. I think she's the teacher. She was one of the teachers. Right. And what was the... the what, what was the um what was the event of this photo well it's it's the it's a graduating class at Quaker Ridge district number two on Griffin avenue Griffin avenue okay, got it yeah okay. the four room schoolhouse yeah right but i huh. i can't i don't know what year that was it was i wasn't born right and then the 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 black the black man and the two black women. Would they have been parents? No. Uh, one black woman was Hazel, Hazel, Hazel Johnson. Hazel Johnson is um, uh, Esther Johnson's granddaughter. Okay. And the and the other lady is uh, Dorothy Peterson, and that's um, Edward's daughter. And they were I don't know. Uh, they were older. I don't know. I, I don't know. They were older than any of the, maybe one year or so. I don't know. I don't know how it was, but that's who they were. And then but, the black you, man, the black uh -huh. man standing there, we still don't know who he was. Whether he was a bus driver, but he do, he uh. he, he doesn't he doesn't resemble anybody who lived on Saxonwood Road. Okay. So then the two black women, what what were they doing in the photo? Well, see, that's what I, I don't know. I'll have to, I, yeah. I really don't know because I know Hazel and Dorothy, they were older than the rest of the children. Right. But they didn't work so for I the school, did they? I I don't know. I, 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 okay. I, will, I will pursue that question. Yeah, I will pursue that. Yeah. Fascinating. So this would have been... Um, that was Dorothy Peterson, and I'm sorry. What was the other one you said? Dorothy Peterson Hazel, and Hazel Johnson. Hazel Johnson. I'll see if I can. Hazel, no, Hazel, Hazel Upshaw. Hazel. Wow, I'm not sure. She's either Hazel, an Upshaw or Johnson. Yeah, yeah. She she married uh, a, her husband. Her husband drowned. Uh, oh. First husband, I think it was, and then she married a Gill. Uh, at, uh, at the end of her life, she was married to uh, uh, Gill, and okay. um, but I don't know. She was Hazel Upshaw or Hazel Johnson. I'm I'm not sure which one. Okay. Okay. Huh. Wow. All right. Well, I mean, I think uh, I think I've got a pretty good I've got, I've got a pretty good foundation. I know that there's uh, it's only the I guess the tip of the iceberg, but I mean, you've given me a ton of information here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't, you know, I didn't I didn't write up questions. I'm just kind of going going where it goes. But I think uh, you know your description of what it was like is really is really valuable because I haven't gotten this perspective from anybody. Who was around back then? So it's very cool. Um, yeah, and um, the Scars, the Scarsdale Historical Society, they didn't have much, no. you know, in reference to, in reference to our history. No. But but Barbara Mc, McDonald is her name McDonald Mc. Yes. Yeah. She she I, I'm I'm led to understand that she knows. A whole lot. She, she, she does. She, she is. Very, yeah, I'm gonna. She's on my list to talk to. In fact, I think I'm gonna see her next. Well, I'll see her on a on on a computer next week. Um, yeah, she she um she she did the 
she knows it has a story that I haven't been able to get to her in reference to um, my father having an accident with a, a vehicle. He was a chauffeur and uh-huh. he went off the bridge somewhere. And I, I never, ever asked my father about it. I found out about it, I think, maybe after my father died. Uh, uh-huh. Somehow she, she mentioned it. And, and when we were, I was emailing her at one point, and she uh-huh. mentioned something something like that. Um, and I, But I never, you know, was able to connect directly with her. She was working on a movie, and so she was busy. And then the uh-huh. last time I saw her, uh, was at an art exhibit over in Scarsdale Cross from the post office. And uh, I got there late, and she was getting ready to leave, and so I missed uh, her there, you know. But um, but she would be, I would think she would have some information. Um, yes. Um, hey, what's, um, yeah, uh, your your name, What uh, what's the significance behind, uh, behind your, your, your you, name change? Or? Well, um, in the seventies, after I retired in the 71, I, uh, started associating in Harlem a lot. Uh-huh. And I found a bookstore called the tree of life. It was a metaphysical mm-hmm. bookstore. And I started working there. And, oh, okay. uh, at some, at some point, uh, East Indian man, was doing what they call readings and so forth. And he sat down with me and uh, we talked and he looked at me and he did what he, what, what they do and so forth. And he said, um, um, I don't know whether I said I wanted to change my name or what, but he said, what about uh, this name? And he told me that that name, S-U-R-Y-A, meant the sun, like the sun in the sky. And mm-hmm. it comes from a San, a Sanskrit language that was huh. was uh, spoken and not read written. Huh. And uh, it was it was also similar to the word Ra. The 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 Ra is a is a name of a individual from ancient time. Right. And huh. so I said, fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never really. I, I I never asked, but I never really understand where Alfred came from. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So right. Well, it's not, I mean, you can get to change. I was it. a junior. You know, I was a junior. In right. other words, uh, and then the story. Well, my story is that I was born in September. Uh-huh. So Christmas comes, and then New Year's, and in between that time, you have a big party, party, party. And nine months later is what? September. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess you you so, wouldn't be the only one. <laughs> so so they say, uh, well, what are we gonna name him? We'll name him Junior. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't they nice. weren't ready with the name. They weren't prepared like today. You know, everybody's prepared with with all these right. um, TV names that <laughs> these children yeah. now are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, in the past, it was always a name connected with an uncle or an aunt or something, someone. But I never knew where Alfred came from, you know. Um, now each of my father's brothers had Bible names. Okay. And one of my brothers, one of my brothers, David. One of them was Joseph, okay. Isaac. Yep. My father's yep. middle name was my father's middle name was Hezekiah, but he never used hmm. that. And yeah. sometimes you'll see, when you see my name, it'll be Alfred H. Peterson. But I, I just, I was confused and didn't know, and sometimes I wanted to put it, and then, uh, but anyway, that's what that was a little bit about that. <laughs> mm, cool. Huh. Very, very interesting. Huh. Yeah. But um, also, I want to mention that A lady who was the first black city clerk in Westchester, Nancy Fitch. Okay. She grew up 
in Scarsdale. Her father was a chauffeur. Her mother was the maid. Ah. She went to Scarsdale High School. Maybe before or after four, you? Four, before, maybe four or five years older, before me. Okay. And there's some, uh, if you go, if you put in her name, it'll come up. But she, then, then, uh, then, then I guess, I guess the parents passed or something, or they maybe they they moved into when they got a home. I guess they moved into Mount Vernon, and that's okay. where she was living. And she got married and had a son and a daughter. Her daughter is very prominent. Uh, lives in hmm. lives on uh, Post Road now, and her daughter's name is Nancy Fitch. Okay. And um, and um, and Nancy got to be the first black city clerk in Westchester County hmm. and she's always had a uh, a realty business to a certain extent and also okay. she started the she started the literacy program at Mount Vernon uh, library oh nice yeah but but and and she if you could reach out to her she would have yeah. a few some comments, you know, about because she lived in Scarsdale, you know, at the at the family's house with, that her parents live uh, worked. Wow, Nancy, Nancy, F I F I T C H. That's correct. That's correct. And she has yeah. a daughter, Nancy, daughter Nancy Fisher lives on Post Road, and I, I'm not sure how to, but. Um, I, I, I would tend to believe that um uh I don't know whether City Hall Mount Vernon might lead you to her. Um yeah. I'll look around I'll look around here and see if I have uh can find something. But that yeah, Nancy be. Yeah. And then there was a there was a there was a man also and I can't remember his name. Um and they both were Bethel Baptist Church uh members that's mm -hmm. that in white plains and and nancy is a member today she does oh, still okay. goes to yeah 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 it was, uh, the, it was i'm sorry the bethel bethel because that's not one way i could get in touch with her bethel church bethel baptist church Be bethel baptist white plains church. yeah yeah right yeah um um and then of course uh I mentioned briefly about uh the men on Sackingwood Road playing golf. Right. Because it we're right next to the Sackingwood Golf Course. Right. And so there's there's two parts to it. One part is over there near the hot, near the near the parkway. That's where you uh -huh. the, the original, and then you have to kind of walk through the woods to do the last few holes, okay. and that and that's and that's right along Saxonwood Road, mm -hmm. and so at, in the evenings when the golf course kind of closes, we used to go huh. and play those last three holes. Oh, well, that's a pretty and, nice backyard. <laughs> yeah, 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 and. Um, one of Edward's sons worked there, um, worked all the way to when he retired, he was working in the pro shop. Mm -hmm. He was teaching golf, teaching cool. golf. Yes. That's Leroy Peterson. Wow. And, and, his, and, his, and his brother Harold, who also, they were very good golfers. Harold, um, was it would go to um the golf course on um old Mamanic Road. I can't think of the name of it now. But uh, that that golf course when Joe Lewis was fighting and winning, they used mm -hmm. to bring Joe Lewis there to play golf, you know, all, all the huh. sports players, you know, they bring him and he met Harold Peterson, mm. and he asked Harold to travel with him 
just to play golf. <laughs> but Harold didn't, you know. Uh, <laughs> but that's yeah. one of the, you know, one of the things. Yeah. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of that golf course. Big, big golf Could, course. But yeah, they wing, and then wing of course. Foot. Say it again. Is is winged foot over there? I'm not a golfer. I don't know, but uh... yeah, yeah, no, it's not. No, it's not winged foot. No, there is a wing. No, not winged foot. I forget what it is. Uh, Fen Fenway. I think it's Fenway okay. Golf Club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then and then I have uh, Aunt Idell son. Um, uh, is that Jimmy? James. No, yeah. James. James okay. and and Bruce. They were very good golfers, and they played just about every day. James traveled the Bahamas and different other places and played golf. They were very good golfers. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, James and Bruce. They were. James James is the one who worked too. Okay, and James is the one he worked for Scarsdale Sanitation. That's correct, James. Yeah, James worked for the Scarsdale Sanitation. Got to be the union leader. And um, wow. he he uh, my father was working there when he was working there, and then they recruited a whole lot of brothers from White Plains. Oh, great! And, and then um, um, yeah, mm-hmm. it was uh, right. yeah, it, it was uh, I guess employee friendly, you know, <laughs> you know, it was yeah. uh, it was a good it was a good it was a good pay, you know, it was it was hard work back then when 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 they first started. Because everybody was sure. burning ashes, ashes, you know, coal, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and you had to lift those those cast iron garbage cans up from the floor, up to the trucks, and then dump it over. You know, they didn't have the <laughs> right, yeah, it right. Was, no, the it was, it was serious work. Yeah, but uh, but that oh. was employment. Yeah, that was employment. And then, like I said, uh, the young guys. Before I came along, uh, after school they used to walk the polo ponies because they used that was a big, big sport that the men played polo, and so right. after the horse they played, they had to exercise, walk the horses, and some right. of those guys continued with horses and, and ended up a career. One brother, he en- he ended up um, um, Jerry Gerald Johnson. Uh, he ended up working for the White Owl uh, Company in Connecticut. Hmm. Their horse, he was in charge of their horses. And then um, uh, Leon Pitt um, became the the manager of Boulder Brook Golf Course. I mean, uh, <laughs> riding stables. Yeah. Uh, st- stables, yeah. right. Yeah, he... he they did. They did everything, and they never went to school. Huh. You know, they never went to school. You know, they knew how to take care of them from listening to the dad or the fathers or the uncles, and then they hmm. they made it work. Yeah, they they did they did very, they very much. I, I I never I missed that. My grandmother yeah. wouldn't let them. My grandmother wouldn't let them take me to the to the uh, stables. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Do you know why? I don't know. I guess I, I, I think they. She felt maybe I'd get in, get hurt or something with big horses uh, or something. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, at least you got to ride ride on the back of the motorcycle. That, 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 that's oh, yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> but but mm. yeah, any 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 questions you have about any pictures or anything. Feel free uh, to call or ask, you know. Okay, great. I, I mean, you I, know. I appreciate- yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm really happy to speak to you, you know. So I you know, I I I decided, you know, it was important I wanted to do this uh this talk, you know, so it's basically going to be photos and maps and things like that. And uh they're giving me an hour. And I'm going to take more than an hour. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to I'm just going to go over. So I'm going to do probably 75 minutes or something like that. You know, but I've got, you know, 300 years to cover. Uh you know, so uh it's pretty extensive, sure. but you know, you know the uh the whole Purdy descendants area on on Saxon Woods Road is 
you know, it's unusual. It stands out, you know, for that era of, of owning in Scarsdale. And it's, it's very interesting. I'll, I'll give you the link to George because it seems like in between you and, and George. So that would have been, I think, 26 year difference or something like that. George, you'll see, was much more uh, involved in the community, going over to friends' houses, friends coming to his house and things like that. You know, um, he dated, he dated white girls. Uh, so it just, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting to see how that changed over, over time. Oh, and then, well, so also here's, here's what I'm wondering. So if, if you've got this wonderful idyllic community, what caused people to sell and move out to White Plains or other? Because there's barely anybody left now. Okay, well, Ann Esther's house, Ann Esther passed away. Mm-hmm. She, she lived in, in the house by herself. Uh, okay. She's a Johnson. Her husband had passed away. And it is believed that... Um, let me think now. And Esther, Esther Peterson, uh, Esther Peterson, Esther was uh, Phoebe's daughter. Phoebe was the daughter of Robert Purdy. And um, I, I, I still don't know how how that house got built. Someone hmm. said it was brought it was brought there from Yonkers. I, hmm. I, I really, I really, I, I got a lot to tell you right quick. I really don't sure. know, but but Aunt Esther lived in that house. It was it it had an outdoor toilet, uh, mm-hmm. and it was two stories, two two little rooms upstairs, but then downstairs was a little, little kitchen, and uh, there was a well on the side of the house where she got the water from, and um, and uh, I have a picture of her, and I don't know where it is now, of her standing in her front yard, big tall. She was a midwife. She mm. was a midwife, and my uncle Joe and Uncle Dave told me they were born in her house. Mm. Mm. So I, I, I'm led to believe that Preston invited Eugene, his younger brother and wife, to come to live on Saxonwood Road. Okay. Preston, uh, Eugene comes from York, Pennsylvania. That's the furthest place I can find my grandfather was York Pennsylvania mm-hmm. and so when they came I, I believe that um, my grandfather and grandmother lived in the house with Aunt Esther hmm. it's a possibility you know see yeah and then and then my grandfather got a job somehow working on the Rockefeller estate right. now, I don't know how that happened but yeah. he he and his wife and family lived on the Rockefeller estate. They shared a house with another family and I can't think of their their name now. I knew I knew them very well. They had three daughters, but I can't remember the name right now. But in any event, he he my grandfather was a landscape engineer. He he carved out bridal paths for hmm. John D. Rockefeller to ride wow. his horses with with his friend, wow. et cetera, et cetera. You know, they said that he would, uh, to move boulder, big rocks, you know, you had to dig around them and then get down and put chains and straps under them and take ox, oxen mm. and horses to pull, you know, all that, all that, all that, okay? But I'm saying yeah. that 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 Ann Esther's uh, house, I don't know how it got there, but I, I knew... Because I, I visited, I was right there, you know. And then mm-hmm. when Aunt Esther got sick, I was about, I don't know, maybe 13 or something. And they were sitting up with Aunt Esther. Aunt, Aunt Lottie and Aunt Dell sat up with Aunt Esther all night. Aunt mm-hmm. Esther was failing. Aunt Esther was failing, was failing. Mm-hmm. And in the morning, they asked Mary and I, Aunt, uh, uh, Aunt Lottie's daughter, Mary, one year younger than me, and I, it was Mary's birthday. It was May 13th. I forget what year. Mary will remember. But I, anyway, to to sit with Aunt Esther 
who they had laying on the couch in Aunt Susie's house. Okay. And as time went on, Aunt Esther started coughing. And we we told we called for Anna, Aunt Lottie and them to come and they came and Leroy, who was working at Saxonwood Golf Club, would come home to his he was living in White Plains then, but he would come to his mother's house for lunch, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he came <laughs> and then he carried Aunt Esther to her house and put her on the couch because that's where she wanted to, as they say, go home from. And I was uh, right there. I remember I remember that vividly, okay? Wow. You know. So so those kinds of stories, those kinds of feelings are really deep. Amazing. Yeah. See now now the other thing I want to tell you, Dar um uh Donna Lockley, you know that name? I do, I do. I contacted her over Ancestry, but she referred me to uh her cousin. But yeah, I go go ahead. Uh huh. Okay, you, you say she referred you to a cousin? Yeah, she she said, and I I have an email out to her. She said, I contacted her, you know, asking um, if she wanted to speak, and she said, contact Robinette Robinson. Okay, okay. Donna Lockley is the daughter of Jeannie Upshaw. Okay. Jeannie, Jeannie Upshaw is the last of about six or seven children in the Upshaw family. Donna okay. never lived. Donna never lived on Saxonwood Road. Jeannie okay. did, as a okay. young child. Jeannie did before she moved to Yonkers. But Donna started doing a what do you call it? Start with a G of your history of your life of your family. Uh, genealogy. Right. Donna has done a serious genealogical of her of her family hmm. of the Purdy side of her family. I I think very, I've probably very, seen it. Very yeah. very detailed, very detailed. Now she she steps over the board every once in a while, you know, and, and claims some of the Petersons. But anyway, she's done <laughs> that. Okay. Now Robinette who is uh, Alan, who is mm-hmm. a direct descendant of Robert Purdy, is the historian person at Barry Avenue Church. Okay. And Robinette, and Robinette is the person that will correct you if you're wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and she, she, she will speak out. You know, right. she's a little... She's a little back, but she will speak out. So they are two people that I would say you really need to try to get some kind of something from them. Yeah. Uh, now, of, of course, of course, to a certain extent, you can't really get anything from them in reference to living in Scarsdale. Be- right. I mean, what 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 you would get would be what was told to them. Right. But they never right. physically lived there, you know. See. Right. You know. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I, I, I definitely love love to speak to them, and I hope she, hopefully she'll email me back. But you know, I'm I'm not doing a whole. I'm not my whole thing's not on the Purdies, right? You know, I'm I've got to. Do yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand. Everything. And then yeah. the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say, in White Plains, the one of the largest white families that owned land was the Purdies. Right. And so I, I do believe that this guy, Robert Purdy, took that name when he came. It wasn't his original name. I don't uh, believe. That's interesting. You see? But, but it, it, mush, it mushroomed into what it is, what it is, you know? Right, right. Huh, so now I'll go back to George. You see, you have given me some information today, just now, mm-hmm. that, I, that I never got. Yeah. George, Carol Ann's brother, you know, he's a little boy. I knew him mm-hmm. a little child, you know. I didn't know him when he I, – I wasn't around when he was in high school. I wasn't okay. around when he was, you know, in high school. But mm-hmm. but I knew – and here's the story. 
Okay, yeah. When he graduated from high school, he and a brother, a student, a male and a female, went to California, drove to California. Mm-hmm. He he went kind of because he was a good mechanic, and he if the car broke down, he you know he could help with the car. Mm-hmm. And they went to California. And it seemed to have been the time when the military was calling for George. And so he was gone. And nobody knew where he was. Mm. The military came to the father and mother's house, but they really Mm -hmm. didn't know where he was. (laughs) Right. (laughs) However, however... It turned out that he was in California. Okay. The, the 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 girl and the boy who he went with got a little homesick, and their parents sent them money, and they flew back home. Huh. Georgia Georgia didn't have anybody to send him any money, so he just floundered there. He just floundered there. He just lived. He just stayed there. Okay. Okay. Now this story, I'm taking your time, but I I feel you just need to hear this story. No, I'm happy to hear it. I always heard that Georgie had friends over in Scarsdale that knew where he were, was. Okay. But they wouldn't reveal it because they knew the authorities were, you know, but, <laughs> and, and you know, and, okay, it was like that, okay? Mm-hmm. I found out that Georgie was in California, and it just so happens that, Margaret's brother, the twin, Georgie, mm-hmm. who got got a job working at NASA, right, was in California. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, lo and behold, those two Georges, George found the little George. <laughs> and Big George said, Georgie is working at a stable because he, he grew up with... Uh, Leon and all of them learning all about the horses. Right. So he he was working at a stable. Big George said, and Big George said, and he's not he's not uh, ca- uh, moving the uh, wheelbarrows. <laughs> you hmm. know, he's hmm. he's caring for the horses. Right. But then but then we never really was able to uh, find out where, how, how to reach him or anything. His mother or father, his mother passed away. His father passed away. He still, nobody know nothing, no, no, anything. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. I met a young lady in Jamaica from California. And when I go to Jamaica, I stay at her house. When she comes here, she stays with me in right. New York. It, we were associated with a, a fine arts group. She okay. was a photographer, and I was an administrator. Okay. So she comes here one year, and she wants to go to a lot of different movies houses to see what's happening with movies. And I took her up to Hawthorne to the movies houses up there. Mm-hmm. And then I left, and we, I'm driving to take her by my father and mother's stepmother's house in Elmsford and she says to me you say that you're this is white plain this is near white plains she says she mm-hmm. says have you ever heard have you ever heard of a a brother named George Peterson what? Now she knows she knows me as Surya she doesn't know Al Peterson she doesn't know anything it turns oh. out Jordan uh-huh. That Georgie, Georgie met her coming out of high school, and she lived with Georgie uh-huh. until until he moved to the um I forget where it is. He's in some Iowa now. But let me let me tell you. How. She uh-huh. said that Georgie Georgie had joined the Peace Corps hmm. out in California. And there came a time 
when the officials asked him to come in the office and they told him that they had gotten a letter from the uh, uh, the government or something looking right. for this looking for this terrorist <laughs> or well, whatever <laughs> And they said that we know this is not you because of your service and what you've done. So we're throwing this letter away. We're not answering it. Oh. And and he left then, and he somehow moved to I forget the island where he where he's at now. Huh. And and Carolyn had met him and lived with him. She said that he couldn't any jobs he got he never could put his real name so he called himself Tony uh, and he would uh, do mechanic jobs and work with horses and then she got some pictures of him that she got to me and I was able to get those pictures to everybody in my family and his mother and sister mm. and they say that he's up in the mountains in this country this place I forget where uh, I forget the name of the place, but anyway, he teaches the people agriculture and takes care of their horses. Okay, good for him. So, so now you're serve. telling you're you're telling me about him having a girlfriend, and also about no, no, him having about friends. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about George Parnell. Oh, 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 okay. Well, yeah, yeah. well, you got well, you got the story about George Peterson. <laughs> I, I got the story anyway, and I'm ha I'm happy to have the story. But yeah, yeah, I'm glad to clear that up before before uh, you okay. told somebody else. But but I but to. but uh, yeah, but I do think that George Parnell knows more about Georgie because he hmm. the, he was the same age. Okay. So that's why I'd be happy to get what you send me and a number of contact and either, yeah. you know, yeah, by all means. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All but right. Anyway, well, gonna... um, thank you. Okay. Well, for calling. Yeah. I, 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 I really appreciate it. I'm going to, I'm going to look into some things. I want to find out. I, I want to find out a few things. I want to try to find out why is Dorothy Peterson and Hazel Johnson in that Quaker Ridge photo. I'm like, I got to talk to Barbara McDonald. I wouldn't mind trying to look into Al Peterson, the, the, the accident, seeing if I could find anything on that. But uh, all right, I'll be in touch, and I'm gonna I'm gonna send you by email. It's, it's actually it's actually my father's accident, Alfred Peterson, but it's Alfred Peterson, but that's my father. Right. Yes. yes. Oh, you mean? Yeah. I mean, you mean the car accident in Scarsdale? Yeah. 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 Barbara, Barbara, Barbara knows about it. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it'll it's gonna take a few days because I've got a bunch of stuff backlogged. But I'll I'll reach out I'm and sure. uh, okay. All right. and okay. um, and I'll, I'll also send you an invite to the um, you can register if you wanna if you wanna you know, see the history again. It's not gonna ha I'm not gonna go into detail of the of the whole the whole uh, Purdue no, whatever, whatever family, it is. but but I think you'll find it interesting nonetheless. So, I'm sure I will. Yes, yes. All right. It's it's been really right, it's been then. really great, sir. Yeah. So thank you so much thank for you. for for uh, <laughs> keeping in touch, be willing to, to speak to me for so long. All right, great. Okay, have, a, have a great night, okay? okay. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.